Here's, yeah, here's a couple more. There's Anna Stoneman's O'Brien studies. Um, <laughs> these are pretty cool. They're, they're, they're really easy to put in a fish tank because they're kind of compressed. Uh, and again, and they're colorful. They're just they're beautiful fish. So, uh, you know, usually in the field, when I'm taking uh, pictures of things, I'll, you, you might collect thousands of fish, and then I'm selecting out the ones that, I, that are uh, either the most beautiful or, you know, breeding males. Uh, if they're sexually anamorphic, you know, the buck breeding males, or um, just the ones that are in really good condition and things aren't chewed up, they look really healthy in that. And you're making those selections because you can't, you don't have time to photograph everything. Um, so, and then one of the big, these are the same, right? <laughs> um, so another big consideration when you're doing these things is that um, you're trying to capture life colors, right? So you're trying to get this thing as to look as lifelike as possible. And this particular species of prey cichlid here, the cichlid, that fish was like blood red when it was alive. And we anesthetize the fish with usually just a couple drops of cold oil, I'll knock it down really quick, and then you throw it in formaldehyde. And the formaldehyde, their last kick is usually, they stick their fins out. And then just, you know, that was in formaldehyde for like one minute, and already I, I lost that color. So, so that right there, um, you know, the fins were completely red, the body was completely red. That photograph is true to the specimen, you know, as I was photographing. I haven't done any post editing modification on there. But if somebody looks at that picture, like a librarian, or, you know, <laughs> you see, like, hey, wait a second, I've seen those in my fish tank, and those are red, not orange. Well, you know, so, um, I don't know, I have a little different view about how much processing or editing you can do to an image, only because you shouldn't think of this, this image, um, you know, this one is pretty true to life, but they're not always going to be completely true to life, it's, it's the condition of the specimen as you get it. There's a lot of variation in the coloration of these things as well. Who knows, there's, maybe there is a population of these somewhere in the Rio Xingu where they do have orange. I don't, I don't know. Um, here's another one. Uh, so another thing about taking pictures of live fishes is that uh, a lot of fishes have these iridescences, um, blues, greens, turquoises, and um, those are lost almost immediately in formaldehyde. As soon as you put them in there, you can lose that completely. So this one, um, yeah, so there's the top one. That one this one, the bottom one was preserved, and I'm starting to lose it a little bit, but the iridescence is right, this humeral spot there, and then and up there, so you gotta be quick. In other words, you gotta have your setup ready to go, so as soon as that fish stops moving, you plop it in your tank and you get your photos really quick. Uh, to preserve that, to, to make sure you get that coloration. Background, um, I, like I said, I like the back, black, black background. Uh, my friend likes white backgrounds, so we're taking pictures of the same fish with different backgrounds. The white, I mean, you lose a lot of times you lose fin margins on the white black on the white background. Uh, but the the actual dark coloration within the fin shows up better on the white background. So this is a trade-off. I mean, there's no. I mean, you could do a gray background, sure. That's that would be a, a good compromise. I just thought of that. Um. <laughs> I didn't want to keep it, try and keep it 
alive overnight because, yeah, I didn't think it'd make it. So I wanted to get this shot. So here's the original shot, right? Here's what it looks like. It looks kind of crappy. Um, it's, it, you, you can kind of guess that the colors are off there. I didn't have much light to work with. Um, it just doesn't look good. So, so what do I do when I get back into the, back into the office? Um, there's my original shot. I do a color adjustment. I do, you know, auto, auto color correct. That usually gives you extreme values. You back off on that and do a percentage of that. And so right there, it's changed. But I, you know, I collected that fish. I know that that looks more like the fish that I had in my hand than that one did. Okay? I, I know that, but, you know, can I convince you of that? Uh, then also, I forgot to clean that fish before I took the photograph. I was so excited about it. Normally, you want to get this gunk off of it before you take that photo. I, I forgot. Um, so yeah, I got all that gunk on there, so I did some more post-processing. And, you know, cloning. everybody here uses a cloning stamp. It's the greatest invention ever. <laughs> um, yeah, you just use a cloning stamp. You clean all that stuff out. It never existed, right? And I probably did another correction there. I think I burned the, the head a little bit because it was a little too, um, too hot there. I don't know what I did there. You can't even tell anyways. And then, <laughs> and then you mask it at the end. And you know, so this right there, when I first took that shot, I was guaranteeing myself a good two hours in front of my screen to clean it up to get to there. Had I done a few extra things ahead of time, I might have saved myself like an hour. I still would have spent an hour with <laughs> it. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, so this, thing, this stuff has nothing to do with high throughput. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the opposite. All right, uh, uh, so another thing that you do in the field is that um, a lot of times you have fin coloration that you want to get. So up here I've just stuck a pin in that fin to pull it out like that. I've also got a pin, this is a gray line from Mongolia. I've also got a pin up there to get that dorsal fin stuck out. Um, yeah, because otherwise, if you just lay that on the ground, it's, all its fins are going to be folded. You're not going to get all this data. Again, maximizing the data of the specimen. You want to be able to see that fin coloration in there. And then when you Photoshop it, you just Photoshop out the fin. You just clone stamp it out. Uh, a little color adjustment there. If you can catch that, I've probably lower the check, play with the level. And then mask it out. And then, you know, is that exactly what the photo that I took? No. Uh, but uh, it's, I think it looks better. <laughs> um, another, uh, yeah, so specimens in water, I try all, all my shots I try and do in water. Um, they, they come out the best. The, the fish was meant to be photographed in water. Um, although, you know, Chris showed what he showed of the fish's in air, that, that wasn't bad. But it didn't <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Uh, I, I could do better than a robot. <laughs> I might not be faster, but you know, I feel like a uh, Paul Bunyan here. Uh, so, yeah, fish and water, you get these, because you get these details that come out that you can't get in dry air. In dry air, um, all of these things would be folded and they wouldn't. They would say, God, I mean, that's what that looks like in nature. That's what that fish looks like. It's got these really delicate barbels that, um, that flare out like that. And they're really fun to mask that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's what that looks like uh, in nature. You can't get that shot from a preserved specimen or a dry specimen. And you have to get this live, too. After you preserve them, they won't preserve like that. So, um, again, live photography has a lot of data. When I'm not using the squeeze tank, which is probably the slowest way to take a fish picture is with the squeeze tank. Um, for, and for also for larger fish, we use these uh, trays that you fill with water. And we got a white, uh, they got white bottoms to them for black bottoms, you switch them out. And then you just stick the fish in there and uh, photograph them above. Uh, you know, you get photos like this. Again, this is a fish, this is an ancestress, which Chris, the robot, took a picture of this. And and you couldn't see these soft tentacles in the robot picture because they had preserved all motion flattened to their snout. Um, if you get them live, you see the way they occur in nature. These things are they're soft tentacles that, that are found in the males. Uh, uh, you get creative with this kind of stuff.
about. Um, so this is a fish too. Again, uh, this is a night fish, and its body, when it's alive, is translucent. Okay. So if you preserve that, you lose that translucency. It, the whole thing becomes opaque. And even if you put the formaldehyde for a few minutes, you lose that translucency. So this is something you have to photograph live. And um, I was trying to read the record at seven. You know, red big piece <laughs> photographed live at one time, and uh, I missed it. I don't know what you could say. Um, this is another cool technique. I just learned this one in Brazil. Um, so my friend here, again with that tray of water, uh, to position this vessel. This is a bag. This is just a, a, a Ziploc bag or, or a plastic bag filled with water, and then put sunk inside the tray. And because that bag is kind of malleable, you can. This is. This is a catfish that has these large spines and kind of an odd 3D shape to it. So you can, the bag is mounted where the catfish can kind of sit there and kind of cradles it, and then you can get this, this nice shot of a lateral view. There's no, there would be no other way to get that to sit in a nice lateral view without that bag. So I was like, wow, that's cool technology. Um, and then of course you go to the ruler in there, and then that's probably, for me, probably taking an hour to then Photoshop that bag out, but again, um, I'd be ha I was happy I got that shot, that particular fit. Um, and then these are cool, again, background choices. Um, this is a, these are two stingrays that we caught, and uh, I thought this one looked better in a white background, this one better in a black background, and just shooting again. Stingrays are flat, so I mean, you just stick them in the bottom of the tray and you can get them in the shadow. But again, water too, when you're shooting stuff in water, there's no glare. I mean, that's what the water's doing, right? It's getting rid of the glare off your specimen. So you've got a real natural look to it. Um, Do you use a polarizer at all? I don't. I don't use a polarizer. Um, I forgot why I stopped using it. I, I, <laughs> uh, I just I stopped using it like 15 years ago, and I never, never went back to it. Um, but yeah, you can get rid of glare with a polarizer. Uh, sometimes you want a little bit of polarization, so that in this fish, just to give you an idea of the scale size, like how big those scales are, a little bit of reflected light from above gives you that impression of that. Um, and that's, yeah, so again, just photograph from above. When you're photographing these fishes too, so this is a pretty big one, this is a pretty big one, uh, again from the pan, you always want to be mindful too, not just the lateral view, but there might be special features of the fish that you really want to get while it's still alive. Uh, in this case, the teeth are diagnostic of this species. Um, but if you don't prop the mouth open, uh, it'll seal shut and you'll never be able to see these teeth again unless you dissect them out. So, you know, we'll prop open the teeth there so you get a good shot of the teeth. And then, you know, look at your specimens. They might have some cool stuff from around on them. Um, that's a little uh, parasitic crustacean, uh, uh, argulid, uh, I think it was Dolops. Do we have any argulid people in here? <laughs> I didn't think so. There's only like one good poly in the um, so, so yeah, so be mindful of some other interesting aspects of your specimen that, that you might be able to capture at the same time. Um, and then if uh, when not shooting in, in the squeeze tank or in a, in a, in a bucket tray, uh, just you can just use your surroundings if the water's clear enough. So these are these are streams coming off the Andes, the really clear uh, headwater streams. So I'm just you know you're just sticking the anesthetized fish in the water and getting these natural background. Or in this case, my hand. I'm just putting it in the bucket and, and getting a quick shot like that. And again, for a lot of these fishes, it's that water also the fish will naturally extend its fins in the water, and if it has barbels, they will be naturally extended as well. If you, as soon as you pull it out of the water, they all, the fins fold and you lose the barbell. So that, that's the reason why I'm uh, taking that, taking these things in water. All right, say you don't have enough time or you ran a, you know, you're, the people on your expedition drank all your photo tank water. <laughs> wow, you can still get these photos uh, in the hand, by hand. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing there. Um, He's a little more creative cat.